So this is take two of the Green Life Lithium Battery Test. So we're going to be testing out some Green Life Lithium batteries. I have one 50 amp hour in the engine bay. These are pretty affordable. You can get them for 458 for the 50 amp hour shipped, uh, which is pretty cheap considering they're lithium. Uh, but they're not crazy high output. But we'll see how they do right now. I have two in the trunk. The other one's right underneath it, and they're bust together with copper bus bars. And these ones are about four or five years old. The one under the hood is about a month and a half old. Just got it. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be powering uh, some subs, reactive load, on a Digital Designs M5. They're wired down to half ohm. The subs are RE Audio XXX12 D2s. And we're going to be clamping the power. So we have our dedicated amp clamp. Uh, before uh, I first did this test, I was using a cheap Harbor Freight, but this is a true RMS amp clamp dedicated. And then we got the same snap-on true RMS multimeter to measure the AC voltage. And then we have an oscilloscope, probably won't be able to see it, to uh, make sure the sine wave's not clipping. So these are the balancing boards for the capacitors. There's actually 48... Uh, 48 capacitors there's 48 of them in this crate here and to isolate the capacitors and the um, and the alternators we'll be doing this test with the engine off and then we'll play a constant test tone we're going to be playing a 30 hertz test tone uh, that's the loudest frequency with the port I have on the subs right now. The port is tuned to 28, but it likes to peak around 30 hertz and a little bit higher, maybe 32. We're going to play a test tone. We're going to do a 30 hertz test tone. We're going to let the voltage stabilize. And when this voltage stabilizes, that means the capacitors are drained and they're not going to be helping at all. If anything, they're going to be inhibiting the power because once they get low, uh, they're going to want to start charging back up from the batteries, but we'll have a load on it right now, so it shouldn't be too bad. So this should be straight up just the lithium batteries doing the work. So let me get it queued up. All right, here we go. pretty violent so let's see what we got so for amperage we got 40.23 amps for voltage you can barely see this screen uh, it's 71.7 7. and that comes out to Jeez, you can't see anything. 2,884 watts. And then, if you're curious about the sine wave, come on. That's what it looks like. Super clean. And this is, I, I set it up to where it barely barely right before it clips and then backed it off so it's 100 percent clean true rms and like i said the engine was off and the capacitors were drained down i let the voltage stabilize before i took those readings and that's how much power that these uh, are supporting and you can see how much it was shaking the vehicle it was pretty freaking loud uh, and that's just engine off so that's what 458 batteries 458 bucks per battery 
uh, for theoretically I guess they're saying 150 amp hours is what I should have uh, but that's that it'd be cool to see somebody with JY lithium or Winston lithium limitless uh, and see what kind of power they make with their batteries engine off you know same test I did where they let the voltage stabilize and see what it does on their amp you know get it to right before it clips clean power and clamp it see what it does so yeah hopefully this is uh, something that'll help you uh, determine if you want to get these batteries I've been running it for five years on those two back batteries and a month and a half now on the front I just got a new one I had a standard lead acid in the front and it went bad so I got it replaced with a lithium so yeah that's the test let me know what you think if it was way too weak uh, if it was making a lot of power uh, but it was definitely pushing those subs uh, if I played it like maybe 20 seconds louder they getting real hot uh, you can smell them and they're not crazy uh, SPL subs or high power handling but they are ground pounders they're not efficient it's not an SPL car but it's my nice little ground pounder setup now real quick we're gonna see what kind of amperage that the amps drawing on those batteries so I got the amp clamp on DC mode and we're gonna see how many amps is drawing I'm on one of the power cables so we're gonna just double that number and that'll tell us how many amps so let's hit it and see what it does Last minute thing, uh, you notice my alternators are gone right now. Uh, I usually run two 320 amp McMans. Uh, I actually had to get one of them sent in for repair, and I sent the other one in uh, just for a refresh because it had, you know, a good four or five years on that alternator with all the bearings, brushes, and whatnot. So I got them sent in. They should be back any minute or any day now. Uh, but I'm super pumped about that because I had been running around on like one and a half alternators. And now I'll actually have two alternators. And then another thing, when I was going back in the footage, I noticed that my amp, the digital designs, was shaking like crazy. And uh, it was on this screw right here. And uh, I tried tightening it, and it wouldn't get tight. I was like, oh, I stripped the screw. But I pulled the screw out, and it's broken. <laughs> so I'm going to have to... Uh, find another mounting spot and keep that amp from rattling because it's on rubber feet but I'm not sure why this uh, screw broke but yeah any other questions you can just uh, send it in the comments and I'll let you know more details on the sound system I'll probably be posting uh, videos of uh, some demos uh, especially once I get those alternators back now that I'm at full power but that was a last minute thing because I know I, I didn't even notice it was shaking until I watched the video and I was like, holy cow, because this amp not, is not cheap. You try and keep it alive as long as possible. Everything breaks, but you might as well try your best to keep it from happening.